What's better for noise reduction in video? Neat video or Topaz Video AI? Lately, I've been hearing a lot of people using Topaz for you know, denoising instead of its primary function, which of course is upscaling. So I was curious, I had to find out if we should be doing the same instead of using, you know, classic software like Neat Video, which has just been so good for so long. How different will the footage look? Which is the more convenient option? And then which looks the best overall when all said and done? I needed to know, and that's why I made this video. As ever, you can find links to everything below and I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip ahead to the bits that you want, no problem. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really just make my day if you could take the time to hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, it means a lot to me and I thank you in advance. This video is not sponsored and I paid full price for both of these bits of software, but these videos are made possible by my Patreon backers. The idea with that is any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel to buy equipment. I review the equipment and then I give it to my backers via a giveaway. If that's of interest, if you want to support the channel, um, it's a really great way to do that. And plus you can win some cool stuff. So yeah, down below, let's get on with it. So Topaz Video AI, arguably not real AI, depending on your definition of what AI actually is. But actually Neat Video and Topaz work in a relatively similar way by looking at frames ahead and before to kind of make a very good best guess at how to improve the look of your footage. I quickly just wanted to talk about the process of shooting low light footage because I've long since been a, a, a student of the subject and I've got some opinions. So let's go through the checklist of things that we should do to get good, clean looking low light footage. We need a camera with as large a sensor as possible, a lens with a large maximum aperture, and to expose with purpose, placing shadows exactly where we want them to be, and of course, lighting is a no-no. Additionally, don't be afraid to use your camera's ISO. You'll get cleaner looking results overall by cranking the ISO, compared to you know trying to recover shadows in editing. There are also lots of other cool tricks for shooting low light video, which I did uh, in a previous video, and I will link that one below for you. For example, I am currently shooting this video in 25 frames a second because, because I live in the UK, if you know you know. So you'd think that my shutter speed would be 1 50th of a second, right? Well, it's not. I'm shooting this at 1 40th of a second. And that means, you know, one third of a stop more light, one third of a stop cleaner. And could you tell? Well, here's the thing. I know you can't because I've shot countless videos at a 40th of a second and no one has ever noticed. So I say F the 180 rule. There's a little bit of leeway before you start to notice changes in motion blur. But if you've reached your camera's physical limits and you know when you get back and start editing, you've got some noisy footage on your hands. You know, that is the time to reach for noise reduction and deal with that we shall. We're gonna check out some noisy looking footage and then we'll check it out with a neat video and then with Topaz and do some comparisons. Dear God, I hope this translates over YouTube after compression and all of that kind of thing. Uh, fingers crossed, here goes. If you've not used Neat Video before, it's really pretty easy. All you do is drop it on your clip, click where it says options window, and that will open up this control panel. And honestly, my recommendation is just to click up in the top left corner where it says auto profile. It does a really pretty fantastic job of knowing exactly what it's gonna take to clean up your footage. I've been doing it this way, I've tried doing it manually, and honestly, the results have been kind of just as good. I've just made it full screen so we can see what we're doing a bit better. And one of the really amazing controls you get is the temporal filter. And this is how many frames it looks before and after the current one for information to help the program reduce noise. And in terms of accuracy, more is better, but of course, you know, the more frames you choose, the slower it's gonna be. And honestly, I've had amazing results with just two 
two in front, two behind, so I tend to leave it there. The other control, pretty much the only other control I use is in the spatial tab, and it's this luminance slider. And you're either gonna want to just leave it alone wherever it recommends you leave it, or if it looks on the kind of smeary, plasticky looking side, you can reduce this and it will look more natural. And that's it, just hit apply and it's done. Here's the clip we started with, and this of course is S-Log3 footage, and I've really underexposed it and then pushed the exposure in post. And zooming in, we can see all the noise. And then once I add a lookup table, it looks like this. It looks pretty damn awful. But then when applying neat video, it looks like this, which I don't have to tell you is a colossal improvement. Neat video has been so good for so long. And let's zoom back out and have a look. And this just looks like a normal shot. It's amazing, but can Topaz equal or better it? That's the question I want to find out. Jumping into Topaz and you can see I've got our clip loaded and I'm kind of using all of the recommended settings. I'm turning off everything, you know, like grain, motion de-blur, that kind of thing. I was torn between using the Artemis sharpen denoise function or the Nix high quality denoise one. And in the end, I went with the Nix. There's very little difference, really. I tested both of these. I hit export and I waited and waited. I always recommend exporting files from Topaz overnight because it can just take a while. Again, here's our original clip and the file that Topaz gave me looks like this. It certainly looks cleaner, but looking a little closer, we can see some weirdness. There's some aliasing. There's some odd kind of detail, fake detail being added around the logo here. Side by side, the Topaz version does again look noticeably cleaner, but oddly different, slightly different colors, slightly different contrast. And this is just kind of what I've found Topaz does. Here's the neat video and the Topaz version side by side so you can see the differences. The neat video one definitely looks more like the original. They're both doing it though, both doing a damn fine job of cleaning up this horrible looking clip. So I think that was quite revealing. So let's go on to now the pros and cons of each bit of software. Starting with convenience and neat video, of course, is a plugin and Topaz is a standalone slash offline version. Subjectively, I find a plugin more convenient for my workflow. Of course, that may differ depending on how you work. How about editing slowdown? How much do these really slow down your editing? Well, I can't give them a pro for either. These both are gonna slow things down massively. Neat video, you'll want to keep off until you actually render your files. Topaz, you're probably gonna to want to set it rendering and then go to bed or something. I've got to give props to Topaz because it does have all of that extra functionality, the upscaling, which Neat Video simply doesn't have. It's not really what it's designed for. So that's just a bonus. They both do a pretty damn good job of improving the noise in your footage. Neat Video has a sharpening function, which, you know, is fine. Personally, I wouldn't recommend using it. Topaz, on the other hand, can upscale footage, but of course, this is something that you'd have to do in a separate process after doing your noise reduction. Neat Video, won't alter your file sizes. That's a nice thing, whereas Topaz, depending on the file type you choose, will change your file sizes, particularly if you decide to upscale. So to sum up, both Neat Video and Topaz have their merits, and that's why I use both of them really regularly and I was happy to pay full price for both. For me, the fact that Neat Video is a plugin and I don't have to leave my editing software in order to denoise de my footage, that's a big deal. And I think it's a, it's a time saver for me anyway. I can just drop it on my clips, you know, and then switch them off until I'm ready to render my footage down and then switch them back on. Topaz, on the other hand, is something I feel like I would reach for way, way down the line once, you know, once my footage is all graded and, um, it's definitely a more complicated process if, say, there was just one scene that I wanted to uh, denoise. It just means exporting it, then re-importing it uh, to integrate it back into a project and all of that kind of thing. Of course, Topaz is just great at the whole uh, detail recovery side of things. It just can do things that Neat Video can't, you know. I mean, sure, Neat Video has sharpening, but it's just not it's not really comparable. However, with Topaz, I find there are a couple of notable downsides that I think are definitely worth mentioning. 
The first being that you may find is skews your hues, luma, and saturation levels. Like here, you can see that the processed version on the right, the red color has seen some changes, but not quite as much as the greens and blues, as you can see from the scopes. So this is definitely something to bear in mind. What Topaz spits out might not necessarily look entirely like what you put into it. So anyway, now let's sum up everything. Neat video to me looks more natural. It does exactly what it says it's going to do and very well. There's no noticeable color shifting or changes to your contrast or saturation. I also think it's more convenient overall. And I would argue that if noise reduction is what you need, it's probably better value for money. Video AI, on the other hand, has greater potential for sure. The noise reduction is just one feature amongst many that you get. Too much to mention, really. It's likely I'll have a whole other video en route covering all the upscaling tools, so be sure to be subscribed to see that. However, the slight color, contrast, and saturation shifting is an issue with Topaz, but you could make sure you export a high quality version and then make corrections as needed afterwards in your editing software. Whilst the noise reduction does work in Topaz, I find it gives everything a slightly more plasticky look, if you know what I mean. Whereas with Neat Video, you have greater control over the processing. Ultimately, you can avoid this over-processed look by dialing down some of the noise reduction. After all, a small amount of noise is normal and natural. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? Definitely let me know in the comment section. I'll be down there as much as I can be. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio, of which the algorithm has selected this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.